Meditation has been a part of my life ever since I can remember. I personally have been practicing meditation for the last five and a half years. And I've been a trainer for the last eight months, but I'll get into that a little bit later. My college career has been unconventional, to say the least. I started out as pre-med and got halfway through my freshman year of college before realizing that really wasn't for me. And I switched my major about four times before finally landing on international studies and eventually choosing public health. And I think it took me a really long time to figure out what I wanted to do with my life for a few reasons. One, I had always struggled with self-confidence, and I would set my standards for myself so high that any time I failed to reach them or I felt like I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing, instead of finding strength from that situation, I would beat myself up and falter. And two, my idea of success and happiness and satisfaction up until recently were completely misguided. We live in a world that encourages us this idea that in order to be internally satisfied, we have to rely on external circumstances. And this is an idea that's been hammered into our heads probably since we could understand what happiness and success and satisfaction were. And obviously, these are concepts that are different for different people at different times. So it could be the little things, like spending time with friends and family or curling up with a good book. Or it could be getting good grades, getting the job you want, finding the person you're meant to spend the rest of your life with. While all of these things are great things, we're still relying on things outside of ourselves to make us happy. And this idea of external substantiation has been magnified with the increases in technology and the advent of social media. We can't really exist without our devices anymore. It's almost like our phones have become other body organs that we can't live without. And with no offense to anybody in this room, but I can guarantee that the second I'm done talking, the majority of you will probably subconsciously reach for your phone to check your texts. <laughs> and social media. Social media has created this idea of false happiness and satisfaction. Nobody wants to share bad moments in their life, no, lives. No one wants to share their mistakes or their failures. So social media has made it seem that everyone is always successful and happy and satisfied all the time. But what if things don't go our way? What if we don't get the grade we want? We, the person we thought we were going to spend the rest of our lives with breaks up with us. Or we do get the job we want, but there's some sort of negative aspect to it, like our boss sucks or we have a horrible coworker. <laughs> Suddenly, the concept that was providing us with internal satisfaction externally is now negative. So what I'm realizing more and more is that not only is our success temporary, but our happiness is conditional. We're only happy or satisfied because something outside of ourselves is making us happy and satisfied. We're never truly satisfied for the sake of being satisfied. And that's where I realized I was going wrong. So let me back up a little bit. Anybody who knows me knows that my entire life, I had been on a one-way path to becoming a doctor. My whole family is filled with medical professionals, and at the age of five, I declared that I was going to be just like them. And of course, my incredible Indian parents let out a huge sigh of relief because they didn't have to convince me to go into medicine. <laughs> and for a long time, that's what I wanted to do, until I started learning more about myself and my passions and my interests. And suddenly, becoming a doctor was less of what I wanted to do and more of what I felt obligated to do. Because my entire life, I had been taught that in order to be successful, you have to be a doctor. And I was always a weirdly compliant kid. I always knew my parents knew what was best for me. So instead of finding the confidence in myself to stand up for myself, I went along with it. Flash forward to my freshman year of college, and I was miserable. I was taking classes that I hated, and I was doing poorly in them. The person that I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life with broke up with me the second he went to college. And I was still living at home, so I felt like I wasn't having the normal college experience. And after years of having a plan and a direction for my life, all of a sudden I was lost. And when you go through hard times, when you go through a breakup or whatever, everybody tells you to get out of the house, do things for yourself. And I did. I would hang out with friends. I would go curl up with a book at a bookstore. I joined our Bollywood fusion dance team at school. I, get, I would get a massage. But those were temporary satisfactions. I would still come home and still feel internally dissatisfied with myself. And social media became the bait of my existence. I would see my friends and my ex and all my classmates posting pictures of their new college adventures, their dorm rooms, their new friends, all these new things. And I felt like a failure for a couple of reasons. One, I didn't have anything to share on social media. I was still living at home. I didn't feel like I was having the conventional college experience. And two, as an Indian, I wasn't meeting the standard of success that had been dictated for me. I wasn't doing well to become a doctor. But because that was all I knew as success, I stuck with it. And my GPA and my self-esteem failed as a reason. So how did I change this? How did I turn my life around? Like I said, meditation has been a part of my life ever since I can remember. 
My dad has been practicing a form of meditation called Raja Yoga, or Yoga of the Mind, for over 35 years, and my mom started shortly after they got married. So just like people go to church or temple or synagogue, meditation is my way of life. It's all I've ever known. And I always knew that I was gonna start practicing meditation at some point. And I tried it a couple times my freshman year of college, but anything at that point that my parents thought would be good for me or would help me get out of the rut that I was in, I was completely rebellious against. Thankfully for me, and very luckily, I have incredible friends, and I have to show off pictures of these guys because they are my whole world. I was very lucky to have friends who were not only starting their college careers, or they were halfway through their college careers, but they were going through similar things that I was, and they hadn't built up the resistance to meditation that I had. And one of my friends convinced me to go to a meditation retreat one week, and at first I cribbed and I fussed, and I wanted to stay in my own little bubble of self-pity misery. But in the end, I'm so glad I went because it was probably the best thing that could have happened to me. So what is meditation? I'm sure everybody here has a general idea in their head of what it is, but just to give a few more definitions. Meditation is an exercise that trains your mind to regulate itself. It's the ability to focus on one thing continuously without break. And if practiced properly and di diligently, it's a consistent reconnection with your true inner self. And a lot of people brush the concept of meditation aside because we think, how do we function without our thoughts? How do we get through our day without thinking? And another thing that people don't realize is just like our bodies require physical activity to keep it strong and healthy and active, our minds are muscles that also require exercise and regulation to keep it strong and happy and healthy and active. And a lot of times, people neglect their minds because they forget this point. And if you think meditation is hard, you are absolutely right. It's very difficult to get your brain to shut up for longer than five seconds and not think about something else. And that's another pe reason why people don't try it out. The first time I sat down to meditate, it felt like every single thought I had ever had in my then 18 years of experience, existence decided to come into my head at that exact moment. And no matter how many times I tried to push them away or ignore my thoughts or try to get into a state of thoughtlessness, they kept coming back. And I remember thinking, why am I doing this? Here's yet another thing in life that I'm failing at. Why am I even trying? The second time I sat down to meditate during that retreat, my thoughts decreased by a quarter. The third time I sat down to meditate during that retreat, they decreased by half. And gradually, it was as though I was starting to see the world in high definition. Not only could I see my external circumstances very clearly, but I was finally starting to see my true inner self with the objectivity and clarity that I had not had ever before. And the practice of meditation that I am a part of prescribes meditating twice a day for one hour each time. So once in the morning for an hour and once in the evening for an hour. And I'll be totally honest with you guys, it took me a very long time to get to a point where I was consistent with this. Some days I was doing a really great job. I'd get up in the morning, I'd meditate, I'd go to bed and I'd meditate. Before, before I went to bed, I would meditate and I'd be fine. But other days, more bad days than good days, I would just be downright lazy, and I would choose to stay up all night watching Ellen videos and then you know, <laughs> wake up late the next morning instead of meditating. And my rationale for this was like, eh, I'm young. I got the rest of my life to work on my meditation practice. I don't have more time to watch Ellen videos. <laughs> but I think it took me a long time to, re to connect with my meditation practice because I wasn't accustomed to the silence that came with meditation. I think as humans, we thrive on noise because it makes us feel as though we're doing something. And so I'd sit to meditate, and about five to 10 minutes in, I would realize I was craving noise. I needed some sort of distraction. So I'd give up on meditating, and I'd immediately reach for my phone or for my laptop. And what this taught me was I'd come to a point where I hated silence. And this also taught me how loud my world was. And noise is not just sound or cacophony. Noise is the frustration you feel with a family member or a friend. It's writer's block. It's not understanding a concept at school. Anything is noise if it's loud enough to distract us. And when so I realized that I'd come to hate silence, it made me examine my routine. And I realized I couldn't get it through a day without sound or noise or distractions of some sort. I would wake up in the morning and I would meditate half-heartedly before giving up because it got too hard. And I'd immediately reach for my phone or for my laptop. 
and I would play music and videos while I was getting ready for school or while I was eating breakfast. I would drive to school with music on. I would get to class and I'd be fine, and then about halfway through class, I'd zone out thinking about the video I watched that morning. And there'd be so much chaos coming around me and in me because of my thoughts and all these distractions that I'd come home and feel frustrated and let out that frustration on my family members because I didn't know what to do with it. And I'd start my homework and feel frustrated because I wasn't understanding the concepts, but that's because I had music on in the background. And then I'd try to sit down and meditate at the end of the day, and I'd give up again because there was so much going on in my head, and I'd get annoyed when I couldn't fall asleep, and then I'd get frustrated because I felt like I wasn't progressing in my meditation practice. So what this taught me was that in order to create a true connection with my inner self, I had to learn how to love silence. And in order to learn how to love silence, I had to really use my willpower and commit to my meditation practice. And in order to sustain the love for silence that I had cultivated internally, my internal environment had to interact with my external environment. And so the more and more I meditated, the more I started to learn how to love silence internally, the more my internal environment began to reflect my external environment. And that's when I started to see the changes in myself that I wanted to see. So here are a few. How meditation creates interaction with the internal, uh, the internal with the external. Confidence. Like I said earlier, I've always lacked in self-confidence, but creating a consistent reconnection with my inner self drove that fear of confidence away. I, suddenly I was able to stand up for myself. I was feeling more confident within myself, and it gave me the courage to eventually switch my major to international studies and eventually get rid of this idea that in order to be successful, I had to do something big. <laughs> Replacing the positive with the negative. Like I said before, you know, we may get the job that we want, but there's always going to be some sort of aspect about it that ends up becoming negative or something that we don't want to deal with, and all of a sudden the entire environment becomes negative. Cultivating a connection with my internal self through meditation has allowed me to see that the positive in any situation, regardless of what it is. Exercise. Not just exercise of the mind, but exercise of the body. When you're taking care of yourself internally, you're given the ability to take care of yourself externally as well. Communication. I seem like I talk a lot up here, but I'm actually pretty non-assertive most of the time. And so by creating a connection with myself through meditation constantly, I was able to say the things I needed to say, speak up for myself when I needed to. Minimizing stress and anxiety, being able to create confidence in myself made me take on challenges without any worry or fear. And staying in the present moment. It's easier to live in the past, it's more fun to live in the future, but it's better to stay in the moment. And that's what meditation does for you. Compassion, tolerance, acceptance, being able to see everyone with, as their true selves because of reconnecting with myself. And willpower. Meditation is hard. But if you can create the willpower to stop your brain from thinking long enough, you can pretty much create the willpower to do just about anything. And the capacity to love. As corny as this sounds, the more and more I was able to love myself, the more I was able to love everything around me. There was only one time in my life that I really strayed away from my meditation practice, and that was when I was working on President Obama's re-election campaign. Um, this is the day my dad and President Obama went public with their bromance. Um, <laughs> anybody who knows anything about a campaign knows that the energy there is so strong that you really don't need much of anything else to, uh, to sustain you. And I realized that I was trying to take the energy from this, uh, from this campaign and use it in my daily life. But once again, I was relying on external circumstances to make me feel good internally. I got to do a lot of really cool things my senior year of college. I got to go on a study abroad trip to Europe to study human rights. Got to be on our uh, Right States accredited model United Nations team. But it became less about the big things that I was doing and more about committing to my meditation practice, committing to my internal self, and making sure that all the values that I created within myself were expressed in everything I did so that I did what I was supposed to do to the best of my abilities. And when I was very fortunate to get the internship with the United Nations, I carried that same mentality with me. So what I'm learning more and more is that we shouldn't have to rely on external circumstances to make ourselves internally satisfied. True success comes when you take the time every single day to work on yourself internally and cultivate the values that you want to see in yourself internally. And then being able to hold on to those values and express them in any external circumstance, whether they be positive or negative. One of my best friends, Suraj, he actually just recently wrote a blog post about this. We think that change is going to come to us as we get older. We think we'll learn how to cook when we move out. We think we'll exercise more when we really need it. But that's not the case. 
We will learn how to cook when we choose to learn how to cook. We will learn to work out and exercise when we choose to learn to work out and exercise. My internal sense of self didn't change until I made the choice to change my internal sense of self. And to me, true success is being able to learn about myself more and more every single day with my meditation practice and using that and expressing it in any situation that I'm put in. Thank you.